produced was Tenshini Naramon, I'm Gonna Be an Angel, which was never finished. And the second show I produced was Furikuri, which I'm also in. So um, for Tenshini Naramon, I wrote the subtitle scripts and the dub scripts, and I was in it, and I was producing it. For Furikuri, I wrote the subtitle scripts and produced it. I didn't write the dub script. But um, I had to, it, it was done by Sync Point. I was working at Sync Point as the producer. Right. Mm -hmm. However, I had to audition for those parts, and and I and then I also wasn't paid as an actor. I was just paid. I was getting a salary, so I wasn't paid extra to do. It. But um, I didn't want people to think that like I was just casting myself in these projects that I was working on because I wasn't really. Because any time I had to audition for something, I gave up my producer vote in the casting process. So I auditioned for Silky, which means that I don't get to pick who is, I don't get to vote who I would prefer to have Silky. Same with Mama when we uh, auditioned, when I auditioned for Mami. So that's why, and I knew there was an issue with like union and non-union. I was non-union at the time, I wasn't in the union, but I thought, hmm, I don't know what's gonna happen if once I join the union, if that's gonna be an issue, if I'm not gonna be able to not do non-union, am I gonna still try to do non-union, like what? So I was like, I'll just keep a total separate name for myself. So that's what happened, and then um, and then what happened was uh, Naruto came out. So and Naruto was union, and by then I was in the union. However, I was financial core. So financial core is a totally different union status, which allows me to work both union and non-union legally. So I can appear in non-union and union dubs with my real name if I wanted to. But I had created this whole Jennifer Sakiguchi persona thing that I that I just pretty much if it was because it was union I have to use my union name which is my given name so I so the non-union stuff I kept using Jensaki and then I started using other names because I had an identity crisis because I thought I started doing more conventions and I was like uh, I don't like one I really valued my privacy and then two I would go to conventions and like I would see some people like I feel like got too into the being a celebrity of stuff and like I really like anime and I really and like being an actor is really important and I didn't want to like I didn't want it to cloud my mind I didn't I didn't want I didn't want to be doing it for the wrong reasons I didn't want to be in this business because I wanted to be a celebrity I just wanted to do it because I love the work so I thought well if I keep changing my name then I can't be a celebrity because nobody's gonna like attach it to the same person. It'll just seem like different people. Then I, I don't have that problem. But then after after um, Naruto came out, then Bleach. Then when I got cast in Bleach, the, when the producers wanted to release the cast list, they wanted to say on the internet like, so and so is the voice of Hinata from Naruto. Well, they couldn't say, Jennifer Sakiguchi is the voice of, you know what I mean? Because I was credited as Stephanie Shea. Mm -hmm. So then it just became a whole thing. So they're like, can you just, can you please just use your real name, even though it's non-union? And I was like, all right, whatever. So then I did that. And then once I did that, it just became a thing. I think ever since Naruto came out, they wanted to always be able to say like, oh, it's Hinata and Naruto. So then I just, I just started using my, my name name, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why it's like a big deal. Everyone's like, oh, it's such a big deal. It was confusing though when I was doing conventions in the beginning. Because like all the Texans knew me as Jennifer. <laughs> and then like, and then my, the LA people would be like, I was like, just, just call me Jennifer and we're here. <laughs> and then people would get really confusing. And then the Texans, then some of the Texans found out my actual name. And then they were like, wait, are you, are you Jennifer? This commission, you're Stephanie, it's clinic. So Monica started calling me Jess. <laughs> because it was a combination of Jennifer and Steph, Stephanie. And then so so a lot of the Texans sometimes, like McFarland will call me Jess. Yeah, that's like my nickname because it's like a blend of the two. Um, uh, and then I remember like Jerry too one time like in the middle of a dealer's room just shouted out some random name. Like, Veronica or something like that. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, is that your name? I was like, no, it's not. Like, he, knew, he knows me personally, but he couldn't remember what my my fake name was. So. <laughs> it was really, I mean, the, the whole fake name thing popped, guys.
created a lot of problems. Like when I did Girls Bravo, I think I went by Lulu, okay. and then and it was a new. So I decided what I decided was like, oh, each time I work with a different director, I'll use a different name, right? But Patrick was directing that, and he got all insecure. He was like, why are you choosing a different name for you know a show that he directed? He was like. Is it because you think it's going to suck? <laughs> Is that why you choose a different name? Like, I was like, no! He was like, really paranoid. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the whole new thing. Uh, any other? Yes. Uh -huh. How does it feel like being part of Kaon, such as the voice of Yui Hirasawa, and being part of the, like, the actual role of, of being um, the actual Yui Hirasawa for a uh, concert? Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and it fulfilled my college dream of becoming an idol. I got to sing in Japanese, um, which was fun. It was hard. I mean, it's hard. Like, I watch those videos, and I'm actually pretty embarrassed by the by my singing, because um, it's not my it's not my natural voice. It's not how I would sing. You know, Jeff was at the karaoke thing. That's not what I sound like when I sing. Nope. Yeah. Can so, um, and it's hard to sing in that voice. Yeah. And like, I can sing pretty high, but it's hard to sing in that voice high. Um, so it's kind of embarrassing. Um, and I think if you watched any concert footage before Anime Expo, I pretty much got all the lyrics wrong. Well, not all the lyrics wrong, <laughs> but like I got some lyrics wrong. But I think the worst was Soccer Con during Food and Hen. I literally totally blanked, and I don't know how I kept managed to keep singing. Just like random Japanese words just started coming out of my mouth. We were not the lyrics to the song. Like, I just, I was actually, I was amazed that I didn't just freeze and stop singing. I don't know how, like just random strings of Japanese words. Yeah. I was like, so it's, it's really embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. But then once we did Adam Expo, things, everyone was like more secure with the lyrics. If you ask me to sing it now, though, I totally forget. Like, I, um, it's hard. Yes. How did it go last night? Yeah, why weren't you there? No. <laughs> Actually, I was going to go, but they closed the bridge down, so I couldn't compete for my job. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you guys, 80, the Bay Bridge, is closed through Tuesday. So. Just westbound. Uh, oh, okay. So you can go back. And back. I, live, I work at Concord, so I live in South um, It was fun. It was a very small group, um, but it was fun. The, the system of entering songs was a little bizarre. How, Jeff, you came to both our karaoke events. Well, how would you compare them? What would you say? Well, I mean, the second one was still fun, but I mean, nothing beats Max karaoke, honestly. Okay. That's probably the more authentic Japanese karaoke experience. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Uh, but this one had more food. Yeah, it did. More food and, yeah. and drinks and stuff. Yeah. And it had cooler. Um, and it didn't break down. The, the air yeah, it didn't, didn't break, break down, down every time we sang something. Um, but yeah, this one didn't have as many uh, songs. Uh, you tried the song that said, Karaoke over here? No, no. Oh. Cool. Anyone else? We have like six minutes left. Sing us a song. No. <laughs> Tonga has a question. No. So, uh, reminisce if you can. Uh, have you ever worked with uh, analog technology or were you always digital? Are you, are, you, are you remembering a certain specific thing? Well, tape recorders versus Pro Tools. Ah. I have never professionally worked in a tape recorder. Wait, is that, are, are, you, are, you, are you asking the question because you have a specific story in mind or well, no, that you no, know no, about? No. Okay, I was like, am I forgetting something? Um, I haven't worked professionally on analog, but I will tell you this. I've worked with Mark Handler. He voice directed um, uh, Foodie Kuri. And he worked on like Voltron, um, and oh a lot of the things like uh, what was the one on the horse? Do you know what I'm talking about? Saber Rider. Yes, he also worked on that. Um, he, yeah, Bismarck, Bismarck. Uh, he, he worked on a lot of stuff, and he worked in Days of Analog doing anime. And he would tell me when he directed, it was very different. You always had to keep in mind if the because any time you re-recorded, you were recording over what you just recorded. So if you got a take that was like pretty good but not perfect and you ask the actor for another take and it's worse, then you lose the pretty good one. You can't go back and take it. So it's like each time you had to like kind of really, and they had a 
everything was timed every line by stopwatch. Oh, wow. That was, I can't 